I'm an American airman. I am an American airman. I am an American airman. I am a warrior. I have answered my nation's call. I am an American airman. My mission is to fly, fight, and win. I am faithful to a proud heritage. A tradition of honor. And a legacy of valor. I am an American Airman. I am an American Airman. I am an American Airman. Guardian of freedom and justice. My nation's sword and shield. Its sentry and avenger. I defend my country with my life. I am an American, I am airman. An American airman. I am an American Airman. Wingman, leader, warrior. I will never leave an airman behind. I will never falter. And I will not fail. I am an American airman. I am a warrior. I have answered my nation's call. I am an American airman. My mission is to fly, fight, and win. I am faithful to a proud heritage, a tradition of honor, and a legacy of valor. I am an American airman. Guardian of freedom and justice. My nation's sword and shield, its century and avenger. I defend my country with my life. I am an American airman. Wingman. Leader. Warrior. I will never leave an airman behind. I will never falter. And, and I, I will, will not, not fail. fail. question for you. How many people in this room have seen that video before? Show of hands. Oh wow, more than 15. Okay, good. All right, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Technical Sergeant Cable Rose, and I will be doing a presentation today. And uh, as it's showing up here, we'll be talking about the Airman's Creed. I know everybody's favorite topic. Rough crowd. All right, here we go. So here's how this is going to go. I will tell you right now when everybody take a deep breath in. And take a deep breath out. You do not have to stand up and do the Airman's Creed. So everybody's off the hook on that one. Easy. Good. After that, I'm going to uh, tell a story. That's what I get paid to do. They hired me to come here to McGee Tyson and tell stories. That's what I get hired to do. So that's a pretty good gig, right? That's not bad. So I'm going to tell you my story. My story with this Airman's Creed. My story with uh, my experience with it. I got one blue rope. Do I have any other blue ropes in here? Where are you coming out of, sir? Okay, so he's coming out of Carolina. Good, because I had a couple blue ropes from my story, so they validated. This is a true story, you guys. So it actually, I had people validate my story. I was trying to see if this guy would for me. All right, so let's get into this, shall we? Who's ever seen Forrest Gump? What's your favorite part? Because uh, I was running. Okay, I was running. Right? What's your favorite part? When he got shot in the butt. He got shot in the butt talks, right? They said that was a million dollar wound, but the government must get all that money because I ain't seen a cent of it yet, right? That's a good feeling, isn't it? That's a good warm fuzzy. Everybody watches Forrest Gump, you're like, that's a good movie. I like that movie. Who's ever seen The Legend of Bagger Vance? Like six people. Do me a favor. What's your favorite part? My favorite part. Wrong. There isn't a favorite part. It's a terrible film. Horrible. They're just shoving emotion down your throat. Robert Zemeckis, Forrest Gump. It's a natural progression. You feel something when you get done watching that. Legend of Bagger Vance, they're shoving it down your throat. So I got two ways I can approach this briefing. We could 
make you go into your flight room, and after every one of your breaks, your green ropes make you stand at attention and stand there and recite the Airman's Creed. Would you learn it in six weeks? Probably. High probability. Would you care about 60 seconds after you walk out the door? Probably not. So we don't make you do that. One more time. I didn't ask this question. How many people actually know the Airman's Creed? There's only about 80 of y'all. I heard y'all yesterday morning at the uh, reverie. There's only 80 of y'all. And who's my, my class first sergeant? Who's my, my booming voice? Is it you? Oh, I don't either. That's okay. <laughs> who's, who's the voice up front in the crowd that does the who? This guy, no offense, I was watching you, was just like this. <laughs> now, hang on a minute. This is what I'd like to hear. Do me a favor, sir. Tell me, what would you actually say? I was saying the port of ours that I know. I don't know the whole thing. That, that's good. <laughs> hey, listen, this guy coming in here, if I may, what was your uh, name and rank, sir? Uh, Petty Officer Jeff Bush. Petty Officer Jeff Bush. Guess what? Petty Officer Bush stood tall and did his, his creed. Okay? And the other eight of y'all that knew the Airman's Creed, y'all said yours as well. Now we're going to find out why the other 231 of you don't know it. I'm not going to call you out. Don't worry about it. But very good. And I did. It's very tough. Think about it. We've got three Coast Guards. Is that correct? Three Coast Guards showing up here to learn the Airman's Creed. Y'all think about that. No, no, think about it. And I do. I appreciate it. I didn't mean to call you out. And I wasn't trying to be smart. But I saw you up there. I don't know mine entirely. That's okay. <laughs> Listen, he knows half, you know half, and you know the other half. And I know y'all do your math on that one. <laughs> but you guys are going to get it. All right? And there's your integrity to say, hey, I'm, I'm figuring mine out, but I stood there and said what I know, and I said the words that I could. And I appreciate that. So guess what? This briefing's the exact same way. We're going to go over a couple things here. Why are you here this afternoon? We're going to go over the history of it. Look at where it came from, because some of us don't even know. We're going to talk about the attributes, the actual words in that creed. We'll look at portraits of courage. Who's got my portraits of courage? Somebody raise your hand out there. I gave you, oh, it's right here. Sergeant Parsons, is that right? He's got a book. We're going to pass the book around here in a minute. We're going to go over a little story from the portraits of courage book. And then my favorite time, story time. So who knows where the creed came from? Who got it? What you got? General Mosley, what did he do? Well, he did get fired. We'll get to that one here later. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Sergeant Crompton, what do you got? Okay. He wanted to have something to unite us. How many of y'all know this? How many of y'all joined the service prior to... Well, hang on. We'll get to it. Real quick. Real quick. Who's got my little green book? I handed it out. What's your date on that green book? 1948. What's the title of that book? Old School Guide for NCOs. The Old School Guide for NCOs. Who's got my little brown shoe? All right, what's the date on that, in, uh, that publication? 27 Feb 2009. The Air Force Enlisted Structure. AFI 36, 26, 18. Who's got my little blue shoe? What's the date? He was, he was not happy. I gave him that at the door. January 1st, 1997. All right, so who joined prior to January 1st, 1997? My hands are up, too. Anybody? 95? 93? 86. That's okay. How many? Nope. Yep. 85, 4? What, what year we got, sir? 1976, right? Starting before 1976. He probably wasn't expecting that. All right, so I'm forced to do me a favor. Which branch of service was it? The best? Which one? <laughs> United States Air Force? Air Guard? <laughs> All right, so how about this? These publications have been around for a minute, haven't they? These aren't brand new. This wasn't yesterday's publication, but let's talk about it. Here's a little story about my Air Force core values. I was living in San Antonio in 1995. May 23rd, I turned 18 years old. May 25th, I graduated high school. And July 17th, my parents packed up everything they owned in the back of a U-Haul and drove away. 
It was nice. They left me, my brother, my roommate Damien, and two girls living in my house, kind of like real world San Antonio before they had real world San Antonio. It was pretty nice. So I'm working at this uh, gun Chevrolet, cleaning, detailing cars. Nothing wrong with that. 18-year-old, got, got a job, pay my rent, then I quit. I had a full-ride scholarship to University of Texas San Antonio for sports medicine. I found out if you quit going to class, you don't get to keep your full-ride scholarship. <laughs> so now I got no job. I got no school. I can't even buy ramen noodles, you guys. That's cheap. I can't even buy ramen noodles. So I ended up driving my car one day, my 1991 Plymouth Acclaim Grocery Getter. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Four-door Grocery Getter. Good times. Car breaks down. Guess where it breaks down? Right in front of Staff Sergeant Hoshino and the recruiter's office on Pet Booker Road, San Antonio. So Sergeant Hoshino comes out the door. Okay, well, what, what are you doing? Because he knew me from the high school, because that's what recruiters do, right? They boots on the ground, they come and meet you. But he knew I was the last person he'd ever see join the service, and yet my car breaks down. Now, we didn't talk Air Force. We didn't do any of that stuff. But got back in my car, got a jump, got on my way. Next day, I started my process to enlist the United States Air Force. How many of y'all had that same kind of story happen to you? Nobody? <laughs> How many of y'all knew this was it? You was joining the service. You grew up, and you little, little, just a little one. You were going to be in the service. Anybody? All right, a couple of us. How many of you had the option to go to jail or join the service? All right. I <laughs> Hang on a minute. How many years of service? 13. 13. Ma'am, who had it up? 13. Sir, how many years of service? 17. So guess what? 13 years ago, he had that option, and yet he's still here today. That says something, doesn't it? I put my foot in my mouth one time. I was like, they don't do that anymore, but you got the option to go to jail. You got the option to join the service. And this guy was like, actually, what happened was, and guess what? I found out they still do that. That's okay. But here's my story. I joined basic training. My car breaks down. I joined basic training. How many of y'all left basic training just a little bit taller? Just a little bit prouder of who you were, what you did. Okay? I did. I got in my car. And every morning in basic training, every morning in basic training, we got up and we went down to the underhang, which, by the way, you guys know those are all gone, right? They're tearing them down. They got six-story megaplexes. Y'all go back. It's good times. But how about this? Y'all go back. It's good times. So when you go back, listen, every morning you got up and you went downstairs and prior to a certain time, you got up and you did your Air Force song, right? Everybody had an Air Force song, didn't we? It was good. Our Air Force song. We all sang it proud. But guess what? I went in November of 1996. Now, y'all don't know. Some of y'all had the fanny packs. I don't know. Some of y'all had the little black portfolio zip-ups. Inside my portfolio was a little blue shoe. Who's got the blue shoe? Who's got the core values? Right here, Sergeant. Yep. Guess what? Every morning we had to get up and we had to recite the Air Force core values. So let's see a show of hands. How many of y'all know the Air Force core values? Okay. All right. Most of everybody. That's good. That's, that's a good percentage. Where'd you learn it at? Probably basic training unless you joined prior to 97. So in November, they were shoving that in my face. And every day of basic training, I got to say, those, those words, those core values, I got to say them every morning, and I got done with basic training, and I was about that much taller. And I got my 91 Plymouth Acclaim, and I went to big, uh, tech school, and I got my 91 Acclaim, and I drove to my next tech school, and I got my 91 Acclaim, I drove clear across country, and I went to Patrick Air Force Base in Cape Canaveral, Florida. Yeah, I know, it was rough, it was rough. <laughs> and I walk in, my very first day on the job, I'm an airman, United States Air Force, and I walk into the afternoon, Two o'clock, I get there, and Mr. Travis, right? He's got that big old beer belly, civilian. He's got that Al Bundy, the hand. <laughs> He's got his coffee mug. Come with me. So he takes me in to meet my supervisor, and I walk into my supervisor, and there's this Eddie Munster, seven-foot-tall dude sitting in the back with his feet up, his size 17 boots on the desk, reading newspapers, Diet Pepsi and a koozie. And he does one of those things my dad used to do. Hey, Sergeant Moore, this is uh, your new guy. He's here. He flips down his newspaper. Flips up his newspaper. Didn't say two words to me. That's my first 30 seconds United States Air Force. 
welcome. So that very first week, I asked them, hey, when do we say our, our first core values? When do we, when do we, you, I don't see them, they're not even on the walls or not. What's, what's going on? Guess what my boss told me? Nah, that's just some crap they teach you at basic. I was now two inches shorter from walking out yesterday at basic training to walking into my very first duty assignment. That's my boss, by the way. Ah, that's just some crap they teach you at basic training. So most of us know the Air Force core values because we probably learned it in basic. So that was my story. That was my Air Force core value story. This afternoon is nothing more than my Airman's Creed story. Again, I don't want to bag or vance this down your throat and make you take it and enjoy it. Make it. You have to like it because it's not going to happen. So I'm going to try to go warm fuzzy on you. But the Airman's Creed. How many of y'all remember the NCO Creed? How many of you remember the Airman Creed? Not Airmen's. By the way, we used to have three creeds. We had an Airman Creed at that tier. And when you promoted, how many of y'all got to a promotion as an NCO and you went and you were charged with your duties and responsibilities? And that's when you learned that NCO Creed because you were going up a notch. Going to be an airman, to be an NCO, we got to take it up a notch. And when you left that NCO tier, you went to the senior NCO tier, you had to learn the senior NCO creed. And General Mosley to Sergeant Crompton, is that right? He said it right. Guess what? We got to put together and said, hey, we got to come up with something for everybody. Because we are all airmen, capital A, are we not? So we needed one creed. Coast Guard. There is a war, uh, Coast Guardian ethos. There's an ethos. You got a prior service in here? Which branch? Army. Was there a soldier's creed? There was an NCO creed as well? Okay. What else? Navy? Anybody Navy in the room? Marines? Was there a creed? I mean, God core country. I watched a few good men. I know that one. But is there anything else? Say it again. So guess what? Everybody had one. We had like 17 at one point. They're like, we gotta, we got to figure something out. But what happens here in this briefing, what is today, Friday? You guys had airmanship yesterday? So you done already talked about this, didn't you? I'm beating a dead horse, aren't I? All right, we're done. Get out. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Them just jokes. But guess what? In your flight room, you kind of talk about this, and you broach this topic as well, do you not? Why we have it? What's the point? So in my classroom, I never forget one of my students. I asked, hey, what's the creed mean to you? And this one student was like, it's a fascist tool. I don't believe a word they say up there, and this is all crap. <laughs> hey, you guys. Hey, and she was very adamant. She was very adamant. And guess what? It became my then mantra for those next five weeks to break her of that. This was a moral victory at the end. At the end of the course, graduation, she shook my hand, and she just kind of went, you know what? Eh. <laughs> Winning. Good. So are these just some words? Now, ma'am, you said you had an old-school NCO booklet, 1948. This is 1948 that we started putting pen to paper that we were going to understand what it was to be an NCO. So what year does, uh, 47? So we very, very, very early on put pen to paper as what it meant to be an NCO. It's interesting. Interesting. So are these just some words? And that's kind of what we're going to break into now here. Now, Sergeant Crompton brought this up earlier. We did. We had General Mosley come out and said, hey, I want you guys to get together. And he actually charged... At the time, Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Chief McKinley, he charged Chief McKinley to put a team together to come up with a creed, just one. Now, I apologize. In this next visual, I still haven't changed it. That dude is not shooting that other dude. I promise you. <laughs> I got these graphics, and I just threw them up there because I want to show other branches, and then some guy in the crowd was like, is that guy shooting that guy? I think, I think he's shooting that guy. So I apologize to my Navy and Coast Guard. I don't mean to make that uh, derogatory. But guess what? Everybody else had part of a creed, soldier's creed, Coast Guardian ethos. They've got one. Why didn't we? And then finally, from our little brown shoe, it says it right there. Since 2009, in that publication, it states 4.1.5.1, we will adopt and internalize both our core values and the Airman's Creed. 
Nobody's ever seen that in that book. Like 11 of us. Okay, guess what? It's been there right in front of our face, and whether we knew it or not. How many of y'all had this situation? This was, by the way, when it hit the street was 07-ish. How many of y'all had the same one I did? I went to work one day, and the boss was like, oh, there's a new poster on the pegboard over there. You should probably learn that. And that was it. They didn't tell me what it was. Get a nod head right here. That's pretty much how it was, wasn't it? I don't think the street date and the street push could have, well, it could. It could definitely have gone a little bit better than just putting a peg up on the pegboard. Because that's why probably none of us have any inclination as to why we don't know what it is. Even though it's been around for carry the one, carry the, I don't do public math, but a couple years it's been around and we still don't know it, right? This is the hardest other part of this briefing. The words from the creed. I mean, y'all think we are a combatant force. Where's security force is at? We got a couple. I saw some berets. Where's TAC-P? We got anybody blow stuff up? We got some people in here. Where are my dental assistants at? Anybody? Personnel? <laughs> Only one to sound off. You guys are slacking. Good. Where's my telephone guys at? I know we're not telephone anymore. We're like, we're like, what are we? I don't even know what we are. Three Delta. I missed that. I got here the month they merged, and I got to go back next month. It's going to be weird. So, so guess what, you guys? How do I tell a telephone personnel, which we aren't 3, uh, 3D, cyber, say it again? That's what I said. How do I tell a cyber transport or a dental tech or a personnelist that we are combatant members of the United States Air Force? It can be a tough sell, couldn't it? Persco? I like that. Persco. She's going down range. So how about this? Look at these first words. These are the attributes coming out of our creed. I'm an American airman. I'm a warrior. I've answered my nation's call. I'm a telephone guy. I literally picked up the phone call, you guys. But my car broke down. I didn't answer a call. My car broke down. I needed a J-O-B. So guess what? Did I join for all the right reasons? I don't know. Did I stay for all the right reasons? I don't know. I had a job. I had a paycheck. Okay? But guess what? Look at this verse here. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear to affirm I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. I'm going to blow stuff up, right? That's what we do. But guess what? It was 12 years of service before me raising my hand and saying these words meant anything other than just a paycheck. Ooh, that silenced the crowd there, didn't it? Twelve years. Now, did I do my job? Did. I did it damn good, too. I was fixing phones like you wouldn't believe. Crawling through ceilings. I fell out of a building one time. Fix your phone. You're welcome. <laughs> but I did it. I deployed, I went to Korea, I went all over the place. I dug my job, but I went home at 4 o'clock. I came in at 7, that's all I did. Until this moment right here. Who's ever Googled themselves? Y'all don't lie, go ahead and put your hands up. Come, yeah, the eight of you, right. Everybody else in this room has Googled themselves. Y'all lying to your teeth. Listen, I, I've been in service for 17 years. I have 11 pictures of me in uniform. That's a disservice. I didn't realize when I started adding it up, I have 11 pictures of me in uniform to show that I've actually done something, and this was not one of them. I had to Google myself. I didn't even know this picture was taken. This is one of my reenlistments. This was my 12th year enlistment when I was reenlisting. This was the moment that I actually found that I actually gave a damn to say those words. Airman's Creed. Interesting. I'm an American airman. Mission to fly, fight, and win. Faithful to a proud heritage, tradition of honor, and a legacy of valor. How many of you are from a family of military members? Brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, moms, dads, grandpas. How many of you are from another branch of service? We've all got some sort of history in probably our past of why we're here. And for some of you who maybe this is the first person in your family ever, 
You aren't the Lieutenant Dan. He had a father die in every major war from 1917 all the way back to the Civil War, remember? If you're not that person, then this is your legacy. You or your children after you will be your legacy. Check out this picture. Check out that stash. Magnum P.I. right there. By the way, if you're looking closely, that does say Olin Mills, 1989. That's my old man. That's my father. After 20 years of service, just before he retired, 1990. That's a hell of a stash, you guys. Other than this guy right here, everybody else is jealous of that stash right there. That's a hell of a stash right there. I saw that one from like across the quad. That's good times right there. That's good times. So think about it. If you raised your hand to whether you are from a family of military members or whether you raised your hand that you're from another branch of service, you are part of our history, our legacy. Those military members before us have paved the way. An American airman, guardian of freedom and justice, my nation's sword and shield, its century and avenger. I defend my country with my life. This is where telling a personnelist to step outside the wire may be a hard sell. This is where my security forces members feel like maybe they are the only ones put in harm's way. But in all actuality, the Air Force I joined in 1996 was coming off that post-desert storm, and we were kind of in a lull. We didn't really ramp back up for another five years. So this even isn't my Air Force that I joined, but it's the Air Force I'm in right now. It's my Air Force now. And I'm still here after 17 years. I didn't have much for a picture. I thought it was pretty good. Say what? It's because I'm calm. That's true. That's true. So how about this? American airman, wingman, leader, warrior. I'm never leaving airman behind. I will never fal falter and I will not fail. We got 240 students right now trying to get through a six-week PME course. By the way, it's week one. How was it? Eh. Eh. It's Friday of week one. How was it? Ah, uh, trouble tonight. <laughs> so I got a question. Who's got my portraits? Portraits of Parsons. Do me a favor. Have you seen this book before or a book like this before? All right, has anyone seen, floating through your organization, Portraits of Courage? It's a little booklet, maybe about 20 pages long. Just hold it up for me. Just kind of Vanna White that thing for me. If you guys haven't seen this before, in 2012, 2013, United States Air Force pushed these out across the globe. Thank you. There's 20 pictures in this thing of random military service members in random branches of service who have done extraordinary things that are just doing their job. And I was in this schoolhouse handing these books out, and I was flipping through them just like everybody else. And I found this. This is, at the time, Staff Sergeant Yassian. Sergeant Yassian, if you can read, and I'm not a big reader, you guys can read what he did. He's on a PRT. He goes out. He's got his weapon drawn. Insurgents are coming. He lays down fire. It backfires on him. It locks up on him. He changes weapons. And once again, he does that again. And read that last sentence there. The resulting impact eliminated the threat. Now, I don't speak English too well, but he blew shit up. Airman Yassian was a telephone maintenance personnel stationed with me at Osan Air Base in South Korea. If you don't know anything about Osan Air Base in South Korea, there's two things to do. Shop and get in trouble. Airman Yassine and I were good at both of those things. So I only know the business side of Airman Yassine, which is fixing phones, and he was damn good at it. And I know the fun side, going downtown, getting a 5,000 won bag of Yaki Mandu and wandering around getting into shenanigans. Okay? Kim Berg, right out front. Yes, sir, you know it well. Airman Yassine left that station as a telephone maintenance personnel and was, went on to his career and has had a very successful career. But in somewhere in that career, he was tagged, come with us, 
go in this convoy, blow stuff up. Telephone maintenance. Not something we thought we were going to be doing when we joined the service in 1996. I don't pull this up to try to point it out. I just said, flipping through this book, those AFSCs in there were not combat-only related AFSCs. So our Airman's Creed, the words that are in there, are telling you, irregardless, I know it's not a word, you guys, irregardless of what your AFSC is, when they tag you, when they tap you, are you ready for this task? It's a tough mindset. It's a tough sell, you guys. So how do we get there? How do we go from 1996, learning my Air Force core values, to 17 years later, sitting at uh, McGee Tyson on a microphone telling my story? By the way, I got a very air-conditioned, cushed job, you guys. I do. And in about 43 days, when I PCS out of here, I'm like 11 years past my time to go deploy. Guess what I'll probably be doing in 44 days? Deploying. I don't know that, but I'm pretty hot for it. So, am I ready to go? I, I better be. Ain't no doubt about it. I've been in an air-conditioned office all these years. Doesn't mean I can't not be ready. So here's my story. That's what I get paid to do, right? Who is that? Chief McKinley. If anybody was listening about 20 minutes ago, that was the gentleman who was charged by General Mosley to put together our Airmen's Creed. Now, I was the deployed to Ali Salim in Kuwait. Anybody been there? It's good times. I left Ali Salim on an emergency rotator after Hurricane Katrina hit Biloxi, Mississippi. So I was stationed down in Biloxi, down from the south, I take it. Okay, word. So she's from Biloxi too. We got this. So I was down in Biloxi deployed when Katrina hit. A couple days later, about a week later, they get us back stateside and we get back down there and it's more of a war zone in Biloxi than it was where I just come from. It was bad. Fast forward a few years, the rebuild, new BX, trying to get built and they're having to bring dirt in and lift it up and all this stuff. And here's Chief McKinley coming down to Biloxi, Mississippi to come down and give one of his last little farewells. He's on his like world tour, you know? When he's about to retire, he travels all around and says his goodbyes. So here's Chief McKinley. And uh, I'm working for the 81st Training Wing Command Chief. I was the exec. And I was sitting up at the desk, and Chief comes out and goes, Oh, by the way, uh, Chief McKinley will be here next week. So uh, do you know the Airman's Creed? The Airman's what? Go learn the Airman's Creed. All right, Chief. So every morning I came to work, I had that video y'all saw through the cold start. That video I played every morning played every afternoon because that's what I do right I, I'm a movie guy I like to watch movies so I learned it we're about audio visual learners that you like to hear and see and do stuff right you gotta that was me so I watched the video and so every day about five six days later I knew the Airman's Creed still didn't mean anything to me but I knew it so I got that part covered so Chief McKinley comes who's ever had the pleasure of meeting Chief McKinley pretty cool cat isn't he he's fun good stories good times dude comes in just real relaxed one to wander through. I got a red horse or CE in the house. He's over at CE at Keesler, and uh, he's walking around and he's telling stories and people are coming up and this young staff sergeant walks up and coined the chief master on the Air Force. It's classic. With a Michigan Wolverines coin. Anybody know where Chief McKinley's from? Ohio. Chief McKinley's quick on his toes. He looked at that, uh, hey, listen, I, appreciate, I know exactly where this is going to go. I'm going to go home and glue this to the bottom of my toilet, so every time I take up, guess what? That's what I think of your Michigan Wolverines. <laughs> now, I tell this story not because I'm trying to steal his thunder. He's a great storyteller. But I'm telling it because I got to spend three days at that point in my career with the senior enlisted member of the United States Air Force. I got to see him on a human level, which every one of us in here is a human. Most of us. Okay, most of us in here are humans, right? So guess what? I got to hang out with the chief, and here's the chief, and the last thing Chief McKinley wanted to do is he wanted to have an all call, you know? We're down. Who's been to Keister? Been to Triangle? Anybody? 
You guys know what I'm talking about? You got 3,000 airmen out there in the bleachers, and you get all, well, actually, the airmen are sitting on the ground, right? That's what we do. You guys sit on the ground, and that's all your base personnel sitting out there. And Chief McKinley's out there, and he's doing his farewell, his final hoorah. He's getting to say goodbye. Were you here for this? No? Anybody else here for this moment? So he's sitting there, and he's standing there, and he gets done, and he just steps away, and he, oh, he comes back to the podium. Hey, uh, does anybody out there know the Airman's Creed? This kid's hand way in the back, and he goes, you. Wow. This Airman stands up, and he goes, And like the, the seas part, right? All the seas split apart and make a hole. And this kid come running down. Yes, chief! He starts screaming. Whoa, 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 calm down, calm down. Uh, Aaron, uh, so-and-so, do you think you know the Airman's Creed? Yes, chief, I do. Broke the thing. All right, here you go. Shoved it in the kid's chest. That kid turned around and said, I am an American Airman. Oof. There's 3,000 people standing up to recite line for line the words in which Chief McKinley and his team put together. He's not only seeing his NCOs out there, he's seeing his airmen out there, he's seeing his return on investment. You guys know the movies? When you get, and I'm like, oh, right off to this, this I'm like, like 10 paces off and like two clicks back, I'm right here behind the chief under a little canopy. The fishbowl, y'all remember the fishbowl? Y'all know in the movies when they get that little gleam right there in the eye? That's the gleam right there. It's on the other side, though. You couldn't see it. But that's the gleam <laughs> right there. That's the moment that Chief McKinley knew this was going to happen. This is going to stick. This is going to be it. And then I got <sighs> sad. I got sad. Because I knew that airman was going to finish his day. He was going to say it proud, just as he did. And guess what happened to that airman? He got done saying it, and he turned around, he walked up, and he goes, <laughs> shoved in his chest and goes, <laughs> whoa, 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 airman, airman, come here, come here. Hey, I got something for you. Hang on. Got choined by, coined by Chief Master on the Air Force. Got choined. Choined. I, I, took, I just coined the word choined. He got coined by the general, coined by the command chief, coined by the, coined by the, he went back like this. <laughs> Did he do it for the coins? And he didn't do it for the nookie. He did it. Why? proud. He stood that much taller the day he learned it at basic training. He stood that much taller. He got up in front of 3,000 people. He stood that much taller when he got coined by the chief master on the Air Force. And I got sad because he's going to go back to his base and walk into his work center and ask his crusty NCO, when do we say the Airman's Creed? And he or she's going to say, that's just some crap you learn at basic training. Think about it. That's me, you guys. That's us. That's each one of us. That's tough. I didn't call an entire room of 240 people across the NCOs. Please, don't take it that way. But this is your path. So I was actually saddened by this story. It made me, made my heart heavy. So then I did this. Randomly, one day, I get a text. This fancy technology you kids got. I got a text. and said, uh, hey, Sergeant Rose. You know that story you tell at the McGee with the guy with the coins and the... I was like, yeah, I remember that story. What about it? Well, I'm down at Keesler, dot, dot, dot. So here's the rest of the story. Fast forward to any one of you NCOs. A year from now, you go to cross train, and you go back down to Keesler Air Force Base for your technical training. And you go into day one and you sit down on day one at technical training back in there and you sit back down, you got a room full of airmen and NCOs and you go around the room just like you've done this week and you introduce yourself and who you are and this airman stands up and is like, hey, I'm uh, Airman Mora and uh, da, da 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 I'm down here from here, Michigan and I'm going to cross train and uh, the last time I was at Keesler, so this airman starts telling a story about the last time he was at Keesler. And the last time he was at Keesler, he had an opportunity to get up 
and tell the Airmen's Creed to all the people. And right then, that NCO jumped in and finished the rest of the story. <laughs> I don't know you. How do, uh, there's no, uh, what the, uh, so he had to explain himself. There's some dude up in McGee Tyson. He tells us, you're the guy. That's, that's you. You're the guy, right? Hey, get, come here. I'm going to call him. So they call me that afternoon. So I got to find out the rest of the story. And we want to guess what happened when Airman Mora got back to his work center? Say it again. He was responsible for the Airman's Creed. No, that master sergeant was like, teach us. And he was. He taught that work. Anybody get from Michigan, Air National Guard, Michigan? A couple of them. Selfridge? Where you come from? Alpena? Selfridge? Where else? Selfridge? I don't, remember, I don't remember what base it was. I should probably get that in my story, right? In detail, sell a story. He's from this great state of Michigan. He was, I guess, down here somewhere. I don't know. I love. That's Wisconsin. My bad. My bad. This airman went back and not only taught his master sergeant, taught the other NCOs in the work center. They ended up teaching their section. Their section ended up teaching the base. And that base now knew the Airman's Creed based on the fact that Airman Mora went back. So who was the real, who was the real power behind that happening up there. That master sergeant. The airman knew it. He wasn't going to stop. That master sergeant embraced it and took it upon herself to pass that to the rest of that unit. That's a pretty cool story. Now, I told this story for almost two years before I got the second half of that story. So I used to always end it with just the fact that, you know, go back. You never know how it's going to turn out. Don't be that person, right? But now I got to know the rest of that story. I got to hear the second part of that to actually know that there was some positive coming out of that. So it's the same thing. <laughs> I told you, it's rough, you guys. It's dangerous. Y'all can take me easy. This is a mob crowd in here. I could get down real easy. Let it sink in. Let it sink in. So what do we do? Is this the warm, fuzzy Forrest Gump, or do I shove it down your throat for an hour and a half and make you take it and say, go, hey, go get this, go learn this, go make you do it? Because guess what? It's not your story. This is it. This is my story. This is how I came to be to learn. And I say it's Airman's Creed. That's it. That's how this happened to me, but not to you. So find the means in which for you to want to embrace this because it's your airmen that are coming back from basic training who know this and wonder if we don't. The eight of you out there that know it right now, good. You got 232 other people to help along. And we got three of our Coast Guard brethren that are here. They're going to probably learn it while they're here just the same and probably learn the rest of theirs as well. And get more than three halves, right? Like man, bear, pig. Half man, half bear, half pig, right? Same, same. Y'all thought you were coming in here. Y'all were going to oh, it's, it's coming. It's time. We're going to be in here for an hour. Oh, this is crazy, right? All right, so not too bad, right? I am Sergeant Rose, and I approve this message. I am an American airman. I am an American airman. I am an American airman. I am an American airman.